today we're going to be making this bowl. So let's talk about supplies. The first thing you're going to need, obviously, is clay. Low fire, high fire, it doesn't matter. Anything that you can fire in a kiln will work. You're going to need something to cover your table with that you can work the clay on. I suggest uh, canvas or denim. Either one will work. You're going to need a bowl that will be for the form so that we can form the clay to it and a piece of plastic that will provide a barrier between the clay and the bowl form. You're going to need a rolling pin, hopefully not your mom's best pie rolling pin, one that you can dedicate to clay if possible, otherwise wash it really well when you're done, right? Okay, and so you're going to need uh, two guides for rolling the clay out in even thickness. I suggest these large paint stirrers, but if you don't have that, you can take two pieces of cardboard and tape them together like so, and that would be just about the right thickness. And you will need a fork to help us score and slip, and a paper clip that we are going to unfold to make a cutter with. Talk about that in a minute. You're going to need texture something that will give you some cool texture. And if you don't have anything like uh, lace at the home, or th this right here is wallpaper, great. Um, this is an old antique doily that's stained, so I don't mind using it for this. This is some fabric I found. But if you don't have any of that, you are welcome to use the bottom of your tennis shoes. Some of them have some really, really cool design on them. So that will work as well. You're going to need some fishing line, possibly, to cut the clay with that you can work with. And I think that is just, oh, and a bowl of water. A bowl of water that will provide for us um, our slip that we will use to adhere two pieces together. So, let's get started. All right, so the very first thing I'm going to do is cut a slice of clay. I've got my fishing line, which you probably can't really see, but, and I'm just going to slice a little piece off. Here we go. And then I'm going to wrap this up so that it doesn't get in my way, because the worst thing in the world is to accidentally slice your clay when you're working on it. <laughs> when not in use. Always cover your clay back up again because you don't want it to dry out, right? Not yet, anyway. All right, so I have this wonderful piece of clay here. Now, if you are taking it straight from the bag, you really don't need to um, wedge the clay, okay? Wedging the clay, and I'm going to pull a little piece off here so I can show you what I mean by wedging. Wedging the clay is when you have, especially with recycled clay, you have clay that you want to knead, like you would do pie dough, and wedge it. And you can, you know, get in there and really push on it, right? And the whole idea is to eliminate air pockets. Now, why would we want to eliminate air pockets? Air pockets hold moisture. And if you have an area in your clay that is still holding water, holding moisture, and you go to fire it, it will explode. Yep. So, we try to eliminate those possibilities by wedging those air pockets out that might collect that moisture. Cool to know, right? But in my case, I've taken it straight out of the bag, so it should be good and wedged already. So I really don't have to wedge fresh clay. I just need to roll it out and get it the right thickness. Now I'm going to roll this slab, but if for some reason, you do not have a rolling pin. You can take it and like this and wiggle and slap. Makes a lot of good noise, yeah. Wiggle and slap. 
and eventually you will get a slab that you can work with. All right. You may have to play with it a little bit more, but that works. Okay. Now, okay. so now I have my guides. I have my guides on either side of this clay. I'm going to start, it's kind of like doing um, pie dough. So if you ever made pie dough with your, with your mom, you already have the knack. But I'm actually going to stand up because it's easier. But I'm going to just gently roll out, roll forward. What you don't want to do is sit there and roll like this because then you're going to get a dent in the middle. So roll, roll. Clay has a memory. So I want to take the clay halfway through that process and turn it over and roll some more. Now, if you're in an art room, you may have a, what they call a slab roller, which is awesome. But we're not in the art room. <laughs> and I'm going to keep on going until I've got it pretty smooth dip there. And also, okay, so this is what happened. This is cool to note. My canvas kind of stretched on me. So yeah, I'm using canvas underneath here. You always want to make sure it's nice and flat when you're done. My next chore is going to be to texturize this. And if you are fortunate enough to have texture that's big enough that you can do both the inside and the outside at the same time, that's great. Now, some of you may want your bowl smooth on the inside because it might be an eating bowl. But some of you may want to have texture here. So I have this, so I've got texture on both sides. Now... Let's say I'm using something like this and I can't do that. I can roll the texture on one side and then flip it and roll it on the other. Now when I do the texture part of this, I don't need the guides anymore. I'm going to put them away. I'm going to take my roller and very gently roll that texture. And you can test it and see. Beautiful. Voila. Pretty cool, huh? Now what I need is the paper clip. The paper clip is going to act as my clay cutter. And I have two sizes. I have the larger size and the smaller size. The larger size is a little bit thicker, so it's more rigid, but because it's larger, it, it cuts kind of strange. This one actually cuts better, but it's harder to control. So what you're going to do is you're going to open this up. And you have to be very gentle and careful with it. Some paper clips are great and they open right up without a problem. And then some break immediately. Like it depends on, you know, the quality of the paper clip, right? So I have that one. I'm going to do the same thing with this one as well. Hope that it doesn't break and that I have chosen wisely. Very good. Now here's the cool thing about this paper clip. You can see that. Put that right there. It has loops, and these loops can also be used later for other projects for digging and sculpting. They're great. That being the case, I always like the smaller loop. So I usually try and open up the bigger loop for my cutting tool. I can take my bowl shape, place it over this, cut it completely around circle-wise and get a nice perfect circle. There's a potential. I can even kind of just kind of mark it so I know where the bowl is, more or less. But I can also come through if I want. Yeah, maybe I marked it a little bit too much. And doll up that edge with some really cool organic type flowy stuff. Yeah. 
and I'm just going to cut like so. Voila. All right, I'm going to need the piece of plastic that I cut to put in my bowl. Now, you'll notice that I'm still on top of the texture paper that I used because it's great. I can use that to pick up the clay and not mess up the clay. If, however, you didn't have that option, you can very gently peel the clay off of your texture, hold your hand underneath it, check the back side a little bit, see if there's anything that you don't quite like, right? And you can use your finger to kind of smooth out any little cracks or whatever. You can take your finger and smooth this edge out a little bit. We'll talk about that in a second as well. So what I want to do now, before I even slap it into the bowl, is I, if you have a sponge, it's so much better. But you want to take the sponge, get it wet, and completely squeeze it out so you don't have water dripping everywhere. And I've got a piece of paper towel because I'm at home and I do not have access to that sponge. So I've taken a piece of paper towel and I have gotten it completely wet and then squeezed it out. And now I'm just very gently running it along this edge. I'm going to take my piece of plastic, place it on top like so. So it's nice and straight, right? No wrinkles. Take your hand, and then I'm gonna plop it into one of my two bowls here. And I don't know which one, but I think I'll do this one. All right. Now this is the part where a beginning student probably has difficulty. If I put all my weight on this and push, I'm gonna get a lot of wrinkly. And I don't want that, so you have to be very gentle. I'm going to use my fingers and just push just very gently until it kind of slides in there. Yeah, it's a sliding, it's a going, it's doing good. Awesome. And now I have a bowl. If I have a lot of cracks and I want to try and smooth them out, and I take a sponge that's wet and I try to smooth it out with water, which a lot of beginning students will want to do, your clay is going to dry at a different rate. In other words, the inside part of the clay is going to dry differently than the outside where you have it nice and saturated. And then when it dries, it's going to crack even more. So hopefully, you have worked fast enough that you don't have the cracks. If you overwork your clay when you're first beginning and you're rolling it out and you're playing with it, you're going to dry that clay out and it's going to start cracking on you. So you want to just kind of dive in and, and go for it, right? All right? I've got this beautiful bowl shape here and I might want to embellish it a little bit. So what I want to do is think about a theme or something. I can make little leaves. I'm gonna set this to the side. There. I can roll out. I'm gonna roll this out. Notice I'm not using my guides because I want this to be flatter, okay? I don't want this to be as thick, otherwise it just doesn't look right. It's just a, a nice little embellishment. So I'm gonna roll it out pretty thin. And then I can cut whatever little shape I want and adhere to that. So maybe some heart shapes might be fun. If you have cookie cutters, cookie cutters work great. You just want the really small ones like they use for maybe candies and stuff. I don't know. There's a nice little heart shape. Voila. And I can put that anywhere I want on this bowl. Okay, you can kind of decide. I might want to have some more heart shapes. I don't know, maybe two or three, some little bitty ones. And that would be one way to embellish. 
I could make a leaf. And so let's say I have a leaf shape, like I want to make it kind of fall. So I'm going to take the thicker um, and just slide. I'm not cutting, I'm kind of pressing in and sliding. If you cut, it might cut all the way through. So now I have a really cool little leaf shape that I could put on there. Instead, I could make a little acorns or maybe it was a holly leaf and it was for Christmas. I could make little berries, you know. Now what you want to do before I put this on here is make sure that these edges are nice and smooth. So I'm going to take the damp. Yeah. And voila, right? And now it's ready to adhere. Let's say I want to sculpt something, something fun. Now I can take my clay and I can model something, you know? The thing is, you don't want something really big and honky in this bowl, because that would be yuck. So you want something nice and, and cute and sweet. So maybe a little ladybug. Let's make a little ladybug to be on that term. Now we're going to talk about adhering. I have a small bowl of water here because I didn't have time to make slip. Oops. And, but it'll work fine for this, what we're doing. I want to make sure that all of my edges are nice and smooth before I adhere. So if there's anything that I'm not quite happy with, I'll kind of doctor up on that. Voila. Yo, there's my little ladybug. And I have my leaf. So again, I'm going to make sure the edges on this leaf are nice and smooth. I mean, it's a real gentle thing. I'm going to come through and make sure that all of these edges are nice and smooth because your finished product is all about craftsmanship. If we don't have smooth edges, when it's fired, it might be really sharp and could cut somebody. It'll also be a lot easier to glaze if you don't have any strange little booger bears hiding around. Let's talk about this for a second. If I put it on, I'm going to kind of tilt this so you can see it. If I put it on so that the leaf is sticking up, when that dries, there is a really high chance that that's going to break right off. And then I'll have this beautiful bowl with a broken leaf before I even get it to the kiln. It could even break after being fired if it's sticking up like that. So the best position that I could do is to kind of put it sideways a little bit so that the sharpest part there is hanging on the edge maybe. I don't know. Um, and then I can put my little ladybug, you know, wherever I would like to put him. And he's a little bit on the thick side. I think I'm going to actually cut him. I don't like that. I have a fork. The fork is going to be best for scoring. And scoring means that I'm going to rough up the area that I'm going to adhere. So I have roughed that up. To the clay. I'm going to do the same thing with my leaf. I like that. There we go. So on the back side of this leaf, I'm going to take the fork and I'm going to rough it up. And then wherever I want to place this, and if you need to put a few little marks, like you could just put a dot or something, kind of mark it where you think that's going to be. I'm going to 
if I can do this where you can see it better. I'm going to kind of score that area, right? I am now going to take some water on my finger and just kind of get that moist and goopy. Yeah. And then place that where I want it. Now, I need to kind of gently wiggle that in place. So I'm going to just kind of take my fingers and gently press on that. I don't want to I don't want to do like a, a smoothing motion there. I'm just bare, I'm just pressing because I don't want to lose my details. And if I do lose my details, I can come right back and like accentuate. Now, I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm going to bring it up here. I've got a few little areas. Let's see if I can. Yeah, it's not going to work. Yeah. Well, anyway, I've got a few little areas right up under here where it got some I call them clay boogers <laughs> so I'm going to take my paper clip and very gently see if I can just kind of push those out yeah that paper clip can also kind of help smooth that edge into the bowl edge a little bit because my fingers are too big to get in there and I want to make sure I have a nice, smooth transition and that everything looks good, right? There we go. And again, I'm going to very gently kind of press her down. If you just slap it on there and don't press, you still, even with the scoring and slipping, risk the chance of it falling off when it dries. That's the whole point of scoring and slipping. It's kind of like clay glue. It um, helps things adhere better so that they don't fall off when they dry. Creates a nice little bond. Voila. My clay bowl is now dry. We call that rainwear. It's still very cold though. Now, if this was of the darker gray and it was still really firm, we would call that leather hard. And leather hard is probably a better stage for putting your name into the bowl. The best thing you can do for putting your name in the bowl is to use a dull pencil or a, a hard lead colored pencil and just bear down a little bit. Now notice how I'm supporting. Got my hand here so that I won't break it, hopefully. And I'm just going to etch my name right in there. And I want to bear down enough that if I glaze this, it wouldn't cover it up, right? Voila. Okay. The next thing that I want to do has to do with craftsmanship. If you take a look at this bowl, you can see that it's got some areas where it looks like little clay boogers or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> uh, especially like right here on this edge. And so what I want to do is to sand that down. You could use sandpaper, that's pretty abrasive, but I love these things right here. Um, I don't think it matters what brand, but this pad is probably too big for what I want it to do, so I'm going to cut it in half. Or if I need it to be any smaller, I can cut, cut it even more, right? And very gently, I'm going to come over here and just buff that edge anywhere that I see an area that needs to be smoothed a little bit more. So, I'm making a mess. Best to do this over the trash can. It's going to look a little bit like this. So there you have it. 
a clay bowl that I can now fire.